the first thing we need to do is the President of the United States has to stop, has to stop igniting the flames of hatred and bigotry and division in this country. We all bleed the same. We all defend this nation when it comes under attack. We are all Americans, not just you, Mr. Trump, and the people you want to vote for you. Represent us all. I don't believe any of what you said today. You have no legitimacy and you have no standing until you have your own personal self-examination about the contributions that you have made to whiteness nationalism and white supremacy and its rise in the United States of America. David Urban, what is John your response Evelyn, to... I, I, I just would like to let David Urban respond mm. to that, uh, David. I, I mean, Poppy, so, so listen, you know, Congressman Gutierrez obviously has his perspective, which I don't, that's, which I don't agree with. You know, I, I, I again, would go, would go back and say, I do believe we need some common sense. Uh, uh, the Congress of the United States, I agree with Congressman Gutierrez, the Congress needs to get into action and really find some common sense things they can do about, you know, to, to, to deal with the, the, the gun problem in America. Look, in, in, in his state of Illinois and Chicago, more, more people die, you know, every week, every month from gun violence than, 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 than doing this shooting. There needs, be a, there needs to be a holistic Let's approach so it. Americans can Let's be safe in their it. homes, can be safe in their homes and it. not worry about being, being killed anywhere. John Adlon, let me ask you a question. Here's the problem. The question Donald Trump here, doesn't care as about always, inner city just, people just that live in Chicago. He doesn't care about people that live in Chicago and that are dying because of gun violence. He doesn't care. He simply wants to use us as a foil to speak to his political base. Look, the fact is the president of the United States must stop inciting violence in America. He is inciter in chief of the violence that we are living in America. He has a huge platform and there was no self-examination of his own contribution. Stop calling people like me breeders. Stop calling people like me murderers. My mom and dad are great people. My children are great people. We came to America to contribute. Stop demonizing us. We love our neighbors and care for our neighbors and we have contributed to the great success and democracy of what is America. Stop using us as political pawns in your game of re-election. The American people should be first forward. Look, we're going to be back here two weeks and here's what I predict. Nothing happened because this president will not act. The last time we had the Brady Bill, the last time we had assault weapons ban, we had a Democratic president, a Democratic House, a Democratic, and you know what the Republicans did? They used our advancement of gun control to take and make sure we didn't have uh, a majority in the House of Representatives. They use it against us. So look, we have to stand up for the American people. Yes, my heart broke. Let's stop allowing people to break the hearts of the American people as they watch these deaths occur each and every day on TV. And let's just say, the president, you must have a self-examination and a self-reckoning with your own words and your own contribution to the death and the mayhem that exists in America today. Well, well, John Avalon, well, well, I, I want to ask you Poppy, a question Jimmy there. Poppy, if I can... listen. I was just going to say, listen, yeah. uh, to the go ahead, point, look, there, there have been, there, there have been plenty, of, again, to go back, 1966, this is when this started, there have been plenty, there was a Democratic president then, there have been plenty of Democratic presidents and Democratic Congresses with Democratic majorities to, to move common sense gun, gun uh, legislation forward. The America needs to act. This, this is, a, this is, we do need to do things. It needs to be a holistic approach. You just can't take away uh, <clears throat> magazines and think everything's going to be better. You need a, a holistic approach to this, and we really do need to address it if America needs to be safe. But the Republican Party is owned by the NRA. Yeah. It has to, it's owned by the NRA. The president view. of the no, United States, not. when he won his election, C went to the NRA. They contributed tens of millions of dollars to his campaign. They are foremost against any, any, any attempt by the, the legislative branch that doesn't, of government, that doesn't explain, by the executive that branch of government, explain the Clinton to put and the Obama people of the United States first again of their guns. Well, one at a time, please, gentlemen. We're not getting anywhere when you're talking over each other. D David, David, a quick response, then I want to get to John Avalon. Yeah, I, I was just going to, look, I, I, I was going to, just again, you know, there have been Democratic majorities in the House and Senate, but with large margins, with Democratic presidents. Yeah. You know, Congressman Gutierrez is, 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 is not telling the truth when he says this is simply the Republicans holding up the world. It's not true. You're not being honest, Congressman.
David, 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 the facts are, you know as well as me, yeah. that the NRA ratings for Republican congressmen matter, and if they vote for gun control legislation, they get primary. That's a fact. John Avalon, J Jim, they, the they, ma Jim, they matter for Democratic congressmen as well. Jim, they matter for Democratic they do, congressmen they as well. Do. Okay. So you can't well, lay this to you can't lay house, defeat the Republican David, Party. David. David, the Democratically controlled House just passed a universal background check uh, bill, which has been blocked in the Senate. That's a, that's a recent example. It's a uh, fact. Uh, John uh, Avalon. And we should, we should question, have, we should question, have background. Question I agree. as to whether, okay, you agree, but John Avalon, for this broadcast, we, we asked 50 Republican lawmakers to come on. The only one who said yes was Ted Yoho, to his credit. But when I spoke with him a short time ago, he was repeating many of the positions we've heard from Republican lawmakers following past shootings. Back to mental health, uh, talking about not rushing to a decision on universal background checks. He doesn't support universal background checks. And the president, while tweeting this morning that yep. he might tie background checks legislation to immigration reform, did not mention new background checks legislation in his public statement there when he had an opp opportunity to do so. Your read of the politics here, have they changed one iota after these attacks uh, today? Is the dynamic any different? It should be. But you saw the president go out in front on Twitter and call for universal background checks, and it was notably omitted from his scripted remarks. What was that conversation like inside the White House? What pressure groups were calling and saying, you can't say that? And look, here's the real shame of it, is that this is a 90% issue. 90% of Americans support universal background checks, but it keeps being blocked by a very small number of folks. And David Urban's talking about a holistic approach, a common sense approach. Well. Mental health may be part of it, video games may be part of it, but there are countries around the world that have mental health issues and video games, but they don't have the kind of persistence, mass murder that we see here in the United States because of gun violence. And so universal background checks ought to be part of that. You know, let's not be naive uh, about agree. what can I get agree, through, John. but let's also not disagree about the fact that this has been blocked by Mitch McConnell, opposed by Republican presidents over and over again. This is not an issue where there's mythic moral equivalence even a little bit. You know what, Wes Lowry, as, as Jim aptly brought up, H.R. 8, Bipartisan Background Checks Act of 2019, passed the House, 240 votes to 190. Eight Republicans, only eight Republicans joined on H.R. 1112, Bipartisan Background Checks Act, again, passed the House, but didn't go anywhere in the Senate. So how does Mitch McConnell answer these questions when this issue of background checks has 90 percent of Republican support? Certainly. I mean, this has been an issue for a long time where uh, the politics in our, rep in our politically representative system has been out of touch and undemocratic with what the will of the people is. If this went up for a national vote tomorrow, all of these things would pass, right? The NRA would be very, very upset. But the reality is, because of the way our political system works, it's not a true democracy, it doesn't really matter that the vast majority of Americans want many things that are considered common sense steps. You know, going back to the president's comments, though, because I, I do think there's a, you know, it's, it's very clear, it's very obvious the Republicans are the ones obstructing uh, legislation to change the way guns operate in our country. We know that. We, can't, we don't need to pretend this is some both sides issue, right? But going back to right. what the president's challenge was today, right? He had to deal with two crises, concurrent crises, the gun violence crisis in our country and the crisis of white supremacy and white domestic terror. He acknowledged one and did not acknowledge the other. He acknowledged the white supremacist terror crisis we're dealing with. He met the lowest bar. He named it what it was. He called it racist. He did not, as the congressman notes, involve any introspection of the fact that this racist manifesto, the president's words, included the president's words, things like invasion. But on the gun crisis issue, I do think that th there was a refusal to name, to name what it was. What we know is that we know that we have a health crisis in the country, at times a mental health crisis, but to, to demagogue these shooters and, and to make it about mental health, th there's some danger there too, right? That there, any number of people deal with mental health and mental health crises. The vast majority of them will never pick up a weapon and do something like this. In fact, what we know is that someone in the midst of a mental health crisis is more likely to be the victim of violence like this than to be the perpetrator. Second, video games. I, I mean, we should be doing studies of Japan and China then. We don't, you know, every country has video games. Uh, this reminds me of Marilyn Manson being blamed for Columbine, right? The reality is there is one thing that is different in the United States of America, and it is our guns, and it is the, and it is the availability of them. And sure, would banning one type of gun get rid of the complete possibility of someone committing an act of terror? Of course not. But the hope would be that we
we would get together to take the most steps possible to make it as difficult as possible for anyone uh, to commit an act like this. It was mentioned earlier, Tommy guns and machine guns. Well, guess what? Those things are illegal now, and people yeah. can't yeah. walk into places and use them. It, it, important point to that, they've been illegal since the 1930s, right? I mean, you know, pre, you know well, the president talked about mental health, David Urban talked yes. about mental health, and one of the first things he did was overturn an executive order by Obama when he came in that dealt with gun access to folks with mental health issues. So, uh, I yeah. mean, you know, I, may, maybe that's a reversal, maybe it's some sign of progress, but let's look at the whole field and not be naive because that speech was about isolating just a lot of Republican talking points that don't get to the heart of the issue we deal with too often yeah. in America.